Well, good morning, good Thursday morning. Great to have you join me on this early morning. And I gotta say, when I woke up and I saw the temperature outside, I'm like, oh, it's gotten a whole lot cooler. Time to open the windows and shut off the AC. Then I looked at my uh, watch and tells me the temperature through the day. Like, nope, it's gonna get warmer today. Today's gonna be those exciting days, according to the news. We're gonna have some uh, crazy weather here in the afternoon. But uh, boy, it is just, it's always gorgeous to wake up in Pasadena. Gorgeous to look outside, see and hear all the birds, see the squirrels and uh, to have the variety of uh, weather each day. Um, hot, cool, uh, windy, rainy, stormy. All of it reminds us of, of uh, God's tremendous gifts of this world and how the world has all these ecosystems that continue to maintain life and sustain life. Uh, it's just, it's gorgeous to be able to wake up and, and uh, just enjoy the beauty of the creation around me and looking forward to the variety that we get to experience today. Again, with that, keeping everyone safe as well. Well, I got my Bible with me today because I was thinking about devotions, and there's a devotion I read last week that uh, really resonated. Um, we have really good Bible studies on Wednesday mornings uh, at church, our lectionary study. And yesterday, uh, uh, there was a long discussion regarding our Old Testament lesson for this Sunday. And we were talking a bit about, is God loving, is God not loving, because he scattered and confused the language of, of all the people and scattered them around the world. That sounded like a, an angry thing, like God maybe was fearful. But God's not fearful of any uh, people or anything like that. It was done out of love. Uh, that was the, the wonder of it, is that God saw mankind, you know, is able to accomplish some small things like baking bricks and uh, using bitumen as kind of the mortar. And so therefore, nothing will be impossible for them because they can do ingenuity and, and technology and what's going to happen next. So therefore, confuse them for their own good because sin was running rampant. Uh, today, we see sin running <laughs> rampant as another uh, shooting uh, took place. Uh, again, people doing evil, evil things in our world. And uh, so that was something that brought up, but what that wasn't the devotion I was going to share today. The devotion I wanted to share today was uh, what I was reading again, uh, Luke and I Ministries, a wonderful, wonderful resource. If you'd like to follow them, it's lhm.org, and they have a daily devotion that comes out. This devotion came out last week, and um, it resonated because, as I mentioned the question yesterday uh, that we had about whether God was loving or whether he was fearful or how, what, why he scattered the people and confused their language. And I tried to share that he did it out of love. God always acts out of love, but for their best interests. He's thinking for the interests of the people. It reminds me of another question that came up. Oh, a number of months ago about uh, do God, dogs go to heaven? And uh, as we talked about that, I, I shared how uh, all of creation yearns in eager expectation. I've had a few devotions where if you look into a, a dog's eyes and how the dog, you know, kind of is there for you, always a companion, supporting, loving, no matter what's going on, uh, that dog is always, uh, you know, conveying a certain type of love for you. Um, dogs are, are wonderful, wonderful animals. And then we have this reading last Sunday that mentions that in heaven, dogs are kept on the outside and they aren't allowed into the city. And someone looked at me and said, Pastor, I thought you said dogs may go to heaven. I'm like, well, let me share with you this morning uh, a very good devotion, some clarity, and also uh, fairly appropriate for this month of June and how the world has kind of modeled it today. The reading comes from Revelation 22, selected verses. I'm not gonna read the entire thing, uh, but selected verses in Revelation 22. And this is the last chapter of the Bible, last chapter of Revelation. It gives us a vision of heaven. And John records, Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, through the middle of the street of the city. No longer will it be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it and his servants will worship him, and they will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they have the right to the tree of life, that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs, the sorcerers, and the sexually immoral murderers and idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright and morning star. Here ends the word of the Lord. Now, like I said, the question comes up, well, why aren't dogs in heaven? What did they do? They seem like they're very loving animals. Uh, Pastor, this is not what you led me to believe. Well, 
let's get back to this place in Revelation here. Because in the kingdom of God, and he said, and we hear that it says, outside of the dogs. And when we think about dogs, we think about pets. We think about those who have been trained, who have been vaccinated, immunized, who, who are friendly, who protect us, who, who are part of our families. We're not thinking about the packs of wild dogs that ran around in Jesus' day. The dogs that ate the dead things, the dogs that carried diseases, even attacking people. Those kind of dogs are nobody's friend. They are dangerous. They, they rely on their natural impulse, impulses, the, 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 you know, the natural ways. Uh, we might even describe it as survival of the fittest, if you would. And so these are ones who act by their natural inclinations just to survive. Now, when Jesus says outside of the dogs, he's not talking about the four-legged type of dogs. He's talking about human beings who behave like wild dogs. The kind that Jesus just lists are these, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, and the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. Now, these people have no place in the kingdom of God. They are outside the gates because they refuse to be separated from their evil ways. They are like wild dogs, eating dead things, carrying around diseases, seeking to, even though they don't know it, to destroy and kill others through their ways. Now, it's pretty scary. And I gotta say, through social media, you see this so much more. I mean, I see friends or people who I used to have as uh, uh, congregation members who I still am connected with through social media. And the things they post, the stuff that's out there, uh, this month of June, uh, all these companies and industries are embracing the sexual immorality, uh, the rainbow things, uh, you name it. The murders, the mass shootings that are going on, all those who embrace and, and hold on to these types of actions and practices, they will find no place in the kingdom of God. But then comes the bigger question I always want to get back to. What's the difference between them and us? I mean, surely we're sinners too. In our lives, we have lied, we have harmed other people, and we have done things in our lives that have put us first instead of God. Maybe we've even dabbled in some sexual sin or some occult. So we should be outside those gates as well. But here's the thing that you need to keep keen on here. We don't belong out there because we aren't like those wild ravenous dogs that are bringing about you know, all sorts of diseases and, and feast upon de decaying flesh and all those things. No, we have been washed clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. He has forgiven us and he has made us new and pure through his death and resurrection. Now, this is what he means when he says, blessed are those who wash their robes so they may have the right to the tree of life. They may enter into the city gates. You see, we get cleansed by Jesus. We are washed in his blood shed on Calvary's cross and given to us in our holy baptisms. You see, that is how we are brought into that city. But when you've been washed, when you've been cleansed of your sins in Jesus and you still cling to those old ways of sexual morality and, and sorcery, of murder and dealing in falsehoods, well, then you're gonna still find yourself outside. Although you've been washed, you've held to those things and clung to them and you remain outside of heaven. Now, this is a scary thing, I think, for us today, that we need to be mindful of those who do practice falsehood of those who are murderers, of those who do dabble in sexual immorality or who embrace it wholeheartedly, that we need to warn them of their impending doom, that this is something that is not going to be accepted or tolerated in God's heavenly kingdom. And so we need to re remember, remind them, as well as we need to be reminded, that it's God who brings us close to him. It's God who brings us inside his gates it's God who makes us his beloved children. You see, we are no longer like dogs anymore. We have a home forever with God, our Father, because of what Jesus has done for us. We have clean robes provided by Jesus, washed in his blood, and he gives us that gift freely, not by anything we have to do to earn it or that we feel like we might deserve it, but he gives it as a gift, and not only to you and to me, but to everyone who trusts in him. This morning I saw a little uh, thing on social media and the benefits of that. Someone had a little meme and it showed a, a rainbow and uh, it was a statement of the quote, I was born this way. And it had Jesus' quote, you must be born again. You see, our Lord gives us all these gifts. He blesses us 
with forgiveness and life. And it's not just for you and me, it's for all people. And yet we need to be reminding each other, warning each other, encouraging each other not to cling to and embrace the ways of falsehoods, the ways of murder, the ways of evil that are so rampant in our world, but to flee from them and to cling to what God provides so freely and so abundantly. And that is his forgiveness, his mercy, his grace, and his son, Jesus. You and I share that gift, cling to that gift, hold, hold wholeheartedly to it, and then seek to be warnings, beacons of light and hope in this ever-darkening world. When people are lost and confused and they're hurting, when they're clinging to the wrong things, might be we be ones who speak God's love and compassion, who bring Christ's forgiveness and hope to them in their times. So that was the devotion I want to share today. I know uh, not always the most politically correct, but let's be honest, the Bible isn't politically correct, but it's the words of our loving God that brings salvation to all. Well, how about let's, let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for making us clean, for washing us in the blood of your Son and bringing us into your kingdom. Help us, Lord, not to be deceived by the things of this world, but to hold fast to your gifts of grace, to hold fast to your word of truth. And Lord, in our lives and our actions, might we be loving towards others and sharing with them words of warning, correction, and forgiveness, just as you have shown to each of us. Bless us to have the right words at the right time, so we might be ready for that time that we look forward to welcoming our Savior as he comes to bring us into, heaven, into his heavenly kingdom. Lord, bless us today. Give us the strength. Give us the, the courage. Give us the wisdom to see through the wisdom and philosophies of our world and age to know the truth, the truth that you've given to us in Jesus. We ask all this in his name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me this morning. Uh, good to see you, Ray, and so many others. It's neat doing this little video because it names pop up all over the place of people who are tuning in. And it's nice to see all of you. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Uh, stay cool as it's going to get warmer. Uh, to, today is a, is a wonderful day for, uh, for St. Paul's and Glen Burnie. And I'll be over with them tonight as we have uh, their graduation of their eighth grade students. As the students look forward to going on to, to high school. A big transition. And also as a the cool thing yesterday, we got to take Ben last night over to do his senior photos. Uh, boy, seeing him with a cap and gown and a tuxedo, uh, it all becomes real that our last little uh, chickadee here in the house is now about ready to leave the nest. But um, boy, so many things of watching growth and changes and, and all. And uh, one last thing is you guys are keeping my son Josh in your prayers. He has now finished his uh, first couple of days of his internship and having an amazing time. And so thank you for your prayers and for your encouragement. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. May the Lord bless you and know that I love you. Aloha.